Okay, here's an article I found in Newsweek, um, and it's about slavery in America, and it's really not a subject that I even want to touch upon. Um, I'm really a researcher, and I'm trying to do ancient societies, uh, the Bible, Sumerians, symbolism, all kinds of ancient things, and you wouldn't believe what I found. I'll, I'll tell you here later, and you can look at some of my other videos and find out it's, uh, it actually reveals where the Bible comes from and what it uh, really originally was. Um, but please take a look at that. But also, please take a look at this information. No matter what color you are, please look at this information. It's truth. This is by Dana Ramey Berry. A comment on this said that she was Chuck Berry's nieces or grandniece. Uh, you know, so like, uh, I guess in uh, Back to the Future, uh, whenever... He's out there jamming, and the guy calls Chuck Berry on the phone and goes, Chuck, Chuck, this is your cousin, Marvin. It would have been Marvin's daughter, Marvin's son's daughter. That's who this is. But it doesn't matter if she's green. It doesn't matter if she's a Chinese student in America or whatever. What she really is is the professor of slavery of the University of Texas. And a America and world renowned authority on slavery in America and the entire slavery trade of the world. She can tell you what happened in Argentina, what, you know, okay. But let's just look at this information that she's got because I was challenged by a guy. Um, the only reason I'm doing this really is that, uh, on one of my threads about the Bible, one of these new black Israelite Hebrews that say that they're actually the Hebrews out of the Bible challenged me and he said uh, that we were in uh, slavery in America for 400 years and the end of that's coming. And uh, I'm like, what the hell do you mean end of that's coming? You were yeah, Slavery ended in 1865 and he goes 400 years and Jacob's trouble and stuff. And so I look into this, and this is actually where black people are going to try to rise up and take over the nation or something silly. And it's going to end up getting a lot of people killed and them set back just about like to about like this again. And it's going to be terrible and a bad recourse of humanity that for thousands of years from now we'll look back on as, oh man, you know, what happened? Well, let's just look at this. Let's look at this. That was shortly after emancipation. So this was originally published on the conversation and you can read the original article there. You can go to Newsweek and do this. You can look up slavery in America and you'll find this Newsweek article. She starts, people think they know everything about slavery in the United States, but they don't. They think the majority of African slaves come to the American colonies, but they didn't. They talk about 400 years of slavery, but it wasn't. They claim all the Southerners owned slaves, but they didn't. Some argue it was a long time ago, but it really wasn't. Slavery has been in the news a lot lately, from the discovery of the auction of 272 enslaved people that enabled Georgetown to remain in operation in getting its grounds done, to the McGraw-Hill textbook controversy over calling slaves workers from Africa rather than referring to, referring to them as slaves every time they referred to them. I looked into that too, and it's like uh, after they referred to them as slaves a couple of times, then they referred to them as workers from Africa from then on, and it, it pissed, pissed people off. They wanted to be called slaves for the whole thing, so whatever. And the slavery memorial being built at the University of Virginia recently. Americans are having conversations about this difficult period in American history, and apparently I am too now. Some of these dialogues have been wrought with controversy and conflict, like the ones that I keep having with these guys that jump on and they're all about Yah and they think they're a new his, you know, new Hebrews. Like the University of Tennessee student who challenged her professor's understanding of enslaved families. Kind of got a little bit famous and she was actually right on one point, but wrong on like 13 others, 14 others, but still right on one point to the professor, which you know, it was pretty impressive that she had read up enough or schooled up enough onto it that she corrected him on a date or something. Anyhow, keep up with this story and more. As a scholar of slavery at the University of Texas at Austin, that's who she is, I welcome the public debates and connections 
the American people are making with history. However, there are still many misconceptions about slavery as evidenced by the conflict at the University of Tennessee, where she was right about one thing and wrong about a bunch of others. I spent, she spent her career here now dispelling myths about the peculiar institution of slavery. The goal in my courses is not to victimize one group and celebrate another. Instead, we trace the history of slavery in all its forms to make sense of the origins of wealth, iniquity, inequality, and the roots of discrimination today. The history of slavery provides vital context to contemporary conversations and counters the distorted facts. Internet hoaxes and poor scholarship I caution my students against. So four myths about slavery. The majority of African captives came to what became the United States. The truth? Only a little more than 300,000 captives are 4 to 6 percent of the slave trade that came out of Africa came to the United States. The majority of enslaved Africans went to Brazil, followed by the Caribbean, to work in the cane fields and ended up going bust. A significant number of enslaved Africans arrived in the American colonies by way of the Caribbean, where they were seasoned and mentored into slave life in the cane fields I was talking about. They spent months or years recovering from the harsh realities of the middle passage of being able to come over. Once they were forcibly accustomed to slave labor, many then brought two plantations on American soil. So, only 4 to 6% of the slaves taken out of Africa in the slave trade came to America. The rest were by the Spaniards taken to South America. And the Caribbean. And don't try to act like the Caribbean's Americas. That's the West Indies and who owned the West Indy Club? That was England. Who owned the rest of it? Who owned the British Isles? It wasn't America. In fact, most of the bottom part of America at that time was owned by Spain and France. You remember the Louisiana Purchase, all these things. Anyhow, and the whole left-hand side of the United States didn't really have anything yet. But anyhow, I digress. Myth number two, slavery lasted for 400 years. So here's where I get to tell you, guy that asked me to, to prove it to him, that it's a myth and somebody that's a scholar is going to show you this. Popular culture is rich with references to 400 years of oppression. There seems to be confusion between the transatlantic slave trade, which started way back in 1440 to about 1888, and the institution of slavery. Confusion only enforced by the Bible in Genesis 15:13, when the Lord said to him, Known for certain that for 400 years your descendants will be strangers in a country, not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. By the way, this already happened. This was the 400 years that the Hebrews, Persian people, nomadic tent people in Persia that made up the Bible, were enslaved by other people. It's the 400 years that they, they, they've described this. Scholars tell you, they're, here's the, and here's the 400 years. But anyhow, listen to Lupe Fiasco. Just one hip-hop artist referred to the 400 years in his 2011 imagining of America without slavery. All black everything. The hook of the song goes, you would never know if you could ever be, if you ever try, you would ever see. Stayed in Africa, we ain't never leave, so there was no slaves in our history. We were no slave ships, we were no misery, call me crazy, or isn't he? See, I fell asleep, I had a dream, it was all black everything. Uh, oh, and we ain't exploited, white man ain't feared, so he didn't get destroyed it. We ain't worked for free, see they had to employ it. Built it up together so we equally appointed it. First 400 years, see, we actually enjoyed it. I don't know. It's weird, but when you read that through there, it sounds like uh, they weren't fear of the white man when it happened to them, and they enjoyed the first 400 years. Only problem is, is that she's trying to tell you now it wasn't 400 years. Let's figure out how long it was. Slavery wasn't unique to the United States. It's part of almost every nation's history, Greek and Roman civilizations, Hebrews. Asians on Asians, whites on whites, blacks on blacks, to contemporary forms of human trafficking. The American part of the story lasted fewer than 400 years. How then do we calculate the timeline of slave, slavery in America? 
Most here historians use 1619 as a starting point because 20 Africans referred to as servants arrived in Jamestown, Virginia on a Dutch ship. It's important to note, however, that they were not the first Africans on American soil. Africans had arrived 30 or 40 years before that in America in the late 16th century, not as slaves at all, but as explorers together with Spanish and Portuguese explorers. And they may have been somewhat indentured servants to them, but there wasn't really any slavery going on there. And the Spains have a history with the Moors, and it's fine. Of course, the Moors were under Persian rule anyhow, and the, most of the Moors were slaves to the Persian people and did the fight in Spain in the first place, but I'm not going to go over the Moorish conquest here in this. Um, so one thing that you note about this is in 1619 you say that that's it because 20 Africans. Well, that's not that's not it. They were, okay, so they're servants of somebody that came over, but when does it actually happen? Well, the first slave ship happened in 1673, and because it was a ship and on the docket, it actually said that it had slaves on it. But there was only a group of like eight slaves. So when does the first slave ship come? Well, the first slave ship comes in 1683, 84. I forget. It's on one of these other things I looked at. And it was actually a slave ship to where it was like full of slaves, like you see in the stupid pictures where they're all lined up and shit. And before then... No, there are, how many people were in America that were slaves before then? Um, 28, but it looks like there's probably more than that, a couple of hundred or so that, you know, people have as servants or whatever you want to say, but it wasn't like slave trade. And then they didn't get here and get sold to nobody. They were already their slaves that came over. By the way, one thing that's not mentioned here is that at this point, we're not even America. We are New England. Remember? We're not even under American anything at this point. We're in New England. But let's continue. One of the best known of these Afri African conquistadors was Estevancio, who traveled through the southeast and present-day Florida through till Texas. If you look at it, he's actually a half-Spaniard, half-black guy from the Moorish thing, passed on down from after that, and he was an explorer. Most black people don't even know about him. As for the institution of chattel slavery, the treatment of slaves as property in the United States, if we use 1619, which probably shouldn't be used, but as the beginning date and the 1865, 13th Amendment, as the end, then it lasted for 246 years and not 200. Now that's the stretch number. One thing they don't go into here again is that it wasn't America. It was England, and all owned by England until we revolted in 1776. And so only at 1776 could you actually say that America adopted slavery. And it was only adopted because it was already going on, and a lot of these people had them and everything from England. But... At this point, we are America, and it's 1776 to 1865, and that's uh, 89 years. So, less than 100 years. 89 years was all that America did of slavery, which was 4 to 6% of the slavery trade in general. It starts to get a lot more minimized than people want to act like today, don't they? Boy, they want to get riled up and act like it, but here's the truth. Myth number three, all Southerners own slave. Well, the truth is roughly 25% of all Southerners own slave. The fact that one quarter of the Southern population were slaveholders is still shocking to many. This truth brings historical insight to modern conversations about inequality and reparations. Take the taste of Texas. Texas itself. When... It's established its statehood. The Lone Star State had a shorter period of Anglo-American chattel slavery than other southern states. Only 1845 to 1865. Because Spain and Mexico had occupied the region for almost one half of the 19th century with policies that either abolished or limited slavery. But of course, as I spoke of earlier, the areas that you're all giving credit to white slavery is actually French, 
Mexico and Spain. You know, Eastern Seaborn and everything, but I just want you to figure this into the reality that you have because you don't, most people do not have a reality of, they just think the whole thing was slaves running around, you know, anyhow. So, still, the number of people impacted by wealth and income of inequality is staggering. By 1860, so 15 years later, the Texas enslaved population was 182,566. Wow. So they moved a bunch of slaves over here, huh? Well, I want to let you know that she's talking about Anglo-American chattel slavery. What? Yeah, white people in slavery in America. You you didn't know this existed? Oh, wow. Y'all don't y'all think that you're the only people that ever got enslaved? That's a problem because the reason we left England is because we were indentured servants and slaves to the king and they could do whatever they want to and if you spoke up, they'd skin you alive. Does anybody remember the Dark Ages? Anybody? You know, have you ever... Okay, so we left and came over here and that's the reason in this country we said there was not going to be religion because religion had caused that. So we weren't going to let religion be part of it. It's not in our constitution and we wanted separation of religion or church and state and it's why because it caused the problem of mankind all the way through the dark ages they knew it we found a new land and we were gonna go uh, -uh no 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 this time this land is not gonna be like that bullshit back over there it's basically straightforward sadly now today we have a lot of people that are embracing the Bible weird and odd sex and cults and then there's people that like the guy that challenged me out that believes in Yah and Jah <coughs> And Eli, and they're all going to come back, and uh, it's supposed to happen 1619, I guess, you know, 400 years, if, you, if, you, if you're using weird math, is going to be next year, or in 2019. So, we're all going to, you know, get our, get our weapons ready, just in case y'all go crazy. But, the main important, I wanted to let everybody know here, too, if you're still watching and you're African American, is, is that I found the truth to the Bible. That's what my real research is, and uh, I think that will enlighten everybody on the planet as to how this went down and what the truth really is, and you might want to set down that book before you embrace it and make yourself to look a little foolish. So the weird thing about this was that in Texas is that... Uh, what they want to tell you here, 182,566, but slaveholders represented 27% of the population. So just a little more. But they controlled 68% of the government positions and 73% of the wealth. These are astonishing figures, but today's income gap in Texas is arguably more stark with 10% you know, of home and 50% of the income. So, And I guess her point there is, even though that's the numbers, um, Texas is just getting settled, and so the big giant landowners and farmers and things like that are eating up the numbers real bad. And you, you go another 40, 50 years, and it just it goes right back down. Anyhow, myth four, slavery is a long time ago. Well, she wants to let you know that it really wasn't that long ago. African Americans have been free in this country for less time than they were enslaved. Do the math. Blacks have been free for 152 years, which means that most Americans are only two to three generations away from slavery, and this is really not that long ago. Of course, if you want to talk about Americans, which she uses and capitalizes there, then and you talk about African Americans, not African New Englanders, you see, or African Spaniards, or African French slaves, or African slaves that came from South America after the cane fields went bust then you're really not talking about even 152 years. You're talking about 89 versus 152, and you've been free for a whole lot longer than you ever really were in captivity in America. And in fact, the white people in America enslaved the least amount population out of any of the races. Yeah. And of the African Americans. We did it to ourselves, but of the African Americans, we did the least amount, four to six percent. She studies this stuff for her, you know, exactly. She's got more knowledge than anybody watching this show.
about this subject. White Americans, 4-6% to of the slave trade that came out of Africa. And I'd like to mention too, to throw in something that she hasn't thrown in here yet, but also we had the least amount of time, 152 years if you want to stretch it, 89 if you don't. And we also were the people who said it was wrong and freed the black people. Not just for America, but then we put everybody else up to the standard and it ended in the world. And I think it's real odd that the guy that checked me up about doing this has a big front up on white people and slavery and everything because apparently we spent the least amount of time, treated them the best, and released them. And we released them, and when we give you a lot of rope, and more rope, and more rope, and once we give you a shitload of rope, do you build bridges with the rope? And, and sadly, what we're seeing is, no, we're not. I could go right now on YouTube and show you where all these people are just totally racist, standing around in what looks like earth, wind, and fire outfits, and they claim that the end's coming for the whitey, and that they're about to rise up and do something. And they go around and pick on white people and try to make them cry or something. And it's kind of disgusting. It really is. Especially whenever you find out the truth of the Bible. And how they picked it up and they're all, ooh, look, I know something. It's terrible. It's terrible. Guess who the last people were who picked it up and said, ooh, I know something. Roman Catholics. They took us through the Dark Ages. Yeah. You might want to look into what happened to people in the Dark Ages. Oh, and, and they were white people. They were white people. Look what happened to us. And then you can compare what happened to you and the amount of time that happened to you. And then, and then I want you to take a deep breath. And then I want you to think about that again. And then I want you to step out yourself for a second and think about what happened to us again. Through the dark ages, because of that book. All the way through till now. That book condones slavery. It gives guidelines for slavery. I would say for God's sake, but it isn't. So, here she goes on. I'm not going to read all the rest of this. She goes in and she tells you that slaves are, uh, you know, they were different grades and A1 prime hands and first rate. And if you want to pause this and look at it as I go through it, you can and stuff. But they give people examples and elderly all the way up to a super hand. And they were trying to make them as healthy as possible. And you talk about stealing kids and stuff, and they didn't. No, they actually wanted your kid to grow up and be as strong as possible. They were a boom. And they tried to buy the best-looking black people they could and make them into the best people and the best workers. And it's made them huge and strong today by doing it. And, 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 and you dominate sports and everything. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, look at what humanity can do. Um, but somehow it's looked at as, as that's bad too. Even all the basketball players, you think they think it's bad? That their great, great, great grandfather didn't have much of a choice and had to pick between the people that were there and, and they made good choices. And lo and behold, look, you got Shaq. Um, anyhow, uh, she tells you that back then, uh, one guy sold for 1280 bucks and another guy sold for 1040 because he had lost his right eye. And a reporter from the New York Tribune noted that the market value of the right eye of a slave in the southern country area was $240 difference. And so, you know, like keeping up with market value, like, I don't know, pork bellies and stupid shit. But hold on a second. In 1859, $1,280 would buy you a house. You could buy a couple of cars for that easily. You could buy a house. People, it, you weren't 50 bucks. You were a whole lot more than that. A whole lot more than that. But that's okay. She says by today's standard, you might be 33 to $40,000. I'm thinking it's more about in the $55,000, $60,000 range. Back then, there was a weird change. I mean, you could buy a loaf of bread for five cents all the way up until my mom was out of high school. So, and fill up a car with, you know, gas was a nickel. Everything was, you know, just cheap as hell. But people didn't get paid as much either. Anyhow, so she goes on to tell you about slavery and popular culture and stuff. And 
how it's become popular in Saturday Night Live and all these different things and how Roots had come out and that now with the new knowledge they made a new Roots but the black people did not embrace it because it put it on a lighter light instead of making it look worse on the whitey and uh, that's terrible it really was uh, but uh, she tells you here at the end the elephant that sits in the center of our history is coming into focus American slavery happened we are still living with its consequences I believe we're finally ready to face it, learn about it, and acknowledge its significance to American history. But that it really lasted 150 years at the most, if you stretch it. And if you talk about America, 89. And I still feel bad about 89. You know, but I actually, being a white person, feel worse about the oppression of all the white people for thousands of years. Eh hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, ten times the amount that we're talking about, eight to ten times the amount we're talking about, it's a whole lot more that we were oppressed and people were killed and skinned alive all through the dark ages by our own kind. Yeah. So we left to make America a place where we didn't have to deal with that bullshit anymore. And now, oddly, the ones that are embracing racism are the ones that just 150 years ago, were set free from racism, finally, by the white people. And it's flipped on them, and now all of a sudden it's whitey, 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 and gonna rise up. I'd like for you to watch my videos on the Bible, though, because it's where I have some decent information. This is Diana Berry's information, a professor at University of Texas. This is not my information. It's just somebody wanted me to prove it. Hopefully you'll see this. Look at my other videos, though. Look at the one on Josephus, Flavian Liar. Or look at the white elephant in the room, or in the Bible, I'm sorry. Or any of them. Just look at my channel, and then go up and click videos, and then look through them and find something.